Hello everyone, you are watching the channel Incredible Facts. The U.S. Navy's latest submarine, the Columbia class, costs over $9 billion and is more than just a vessel. It marks a big step forward in naval tech and plays a key role in national defense. Imagine a boat that can move through the ocean unseen, carrying enough firepower to change the course of a fight. How does this massive sea vessel stay hidden underwater? What cutting-edge weapons does it have? Let's explore the ins and outs of the Columbia-class submarine and see why it's set to shake up naval warfare. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. The Navy plans to design and build 12 new ballistic missile submarines through the Columbia-class program. These new subs will take the place of 14 Ohio-class boats that are getting old. The Ohio-class subs first hit the water in 1981 and can serve for 42 years. They'll start to retire between 2027 and 2040, about one each year. The Navy wants to swap in a new Columbia-class sub for each Ohio-class that retires starting in 2031. The Navy sees the Columbia-class program as its main focus and bought the first sub in 2021. This program will keep getting money even if other Navy projects have to take a hit. The Columbia-class subs will be bigger than the Ohio-class when underwater, making them the biggest subs the U.S. has ever built. They'll have the newest tech and stealth features to stay alive for their 40-year life. The program used to be called the Ohio Replacement Program, but got its current name in 2016. The first sub, the USS District of Columbia, or SSBN 826, had its queue laid on June 4, 2022. It should be ready to go in 2027. The second sub will be named USS Wisconsin, or SSBN A27. The Navy fiscal year 2025 budget puts the total cost of the 12 Columbia-class ships at $126.4 billion, up from the FY 2024 budget of $112.7 billion. This marks a big investment, but to give you an idea, the U.S. defense budget for 2024 tops $880 billion. So, when you look at the timing of this order, it's all relative. They expect the first submarine, SSBN-826, to cost $15.2 billion, with the second, SSBN-827, coming in at $9.3 billion. While the upfront costs are steep, the design includes ways to save money. For example, the nuclear fuel cores last as long as the submarine itself, which means they don't need to refuel halfway through its life. On December 21, 2022, General Dynamics Electric Boat got a $5.1 billion contract to start buying materials and building the next five submarines. Before that, a $9.5 billion contract in 2020 covered finishing the USS District of Columbia getting materials for USS Wisconsin and providing design and engineering help. In June 2020, they added $869 million to General Dynamics' contract, bringing the total to $9.47 billion. This allowed them to keep working on the Columbia-class submarines. The Navy changed the Columbia-class submarines' delivery plan when they pushed back buying the first sub from 2019 to 2021. The Navy's 2025 budget says USS District of Columbia will show up in October of 2027. USS Wisconsin comes next in October of 2030. The third sub arrives in July 2032, and the fourth sub in July 2033. But Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro looked things over in April 2024 and thinks SSBN-826 might be 12 to 16 months behind schedule. This could mean it won't get here until October 2028 or early 2029. General Dynamics Electric Boat makes them in Groton, Connecticut and Quonset Point, Rhode Island. Huntington Ingalls Industries Newport News Shipbuilding builds them in Newport News, Virginia. GDEB focuses on subs, but HII NNS also makes other big ships like aircraft carriers. Both these companies work together to build Virginia-class attack submarines. It's worth noting that the Virginia-class is just one of the cool types of subs the Navy has. The SSN-774 class, also called the Virginia-class submarine, is the latest type of fast-attack nuclear sub in the U.S. Navy. These subs can do many jobs, like fighting other subs and collecting intel. They will take over from the older Los Angeles-class subs. 
The Navy plans to buy them until 2043. They should work until at least 2060, and some might even keep going into the 2070s. The Virginia-class subs brings new ideas to the table. They use 3D tech to visualize things during development. They also mix computer help for engineering, design, and making stuff. Building one of these subs takes about 9 million hours of work. Over 4,000 suppliers pitch in. The Navy wanted a cheaper option than the Seawolf-class, so they came up with this. They use a lot of off-the-shelf parts to keep costs down. General Dynamics Electric Boat and Newport News Shipbuilding work together to keep production going. These subs use new tech like photonic sensors instead of old-school periscopes. They also have pump jet propulsors to stay quiet and use modular building to work better. Each Virginia-class sub can do up to 14 to 15 trips in its 33-year life. This makes them flexible and long-lasting for the U.S. Navy's fleet. The industrial setup has an influence on maintaining production abilities. Advanced technologies have an impact on these submarines' capabilities. Photonic sensors replace traditional periscopes, while pump jet propulsors cause a revolution in quiet operations. Modular construction techniques boost efficiency. The design allows each Virginia-class submarine to perform in multiple deployments. This ensures their versatile and long-lasting additions to the fleet. In fact, there is much more to say about this submarine. But let's get back to the topic. As for the Columbia class, GDEB will handle about 78% of the construction and has shifted to full-scale construction at Quonset Point. Four of the six super modules will be built at Quonset Point and transported to Groton for final assembly in a new 200,000-square-foot facility. GDEB plans to hire up to 18,000 workers over the next decade. HII NNS will contribute about 2% of the work, focusing on major assemblies and modules like the bow, stern, auxiliary machinery room, superstructure, and weapons modules. The submarine construction industrial base includes numerous supplier firms, laboratories, and research facilities across many states, with much of this material procured from single or sole source suppliers. GDEB and HII NNS, with GDEB as the prime contractor, will build the 12 Columbia-class submarines between 2021 and 2039. The main function of these submarines, as well as their predecessors, is to participate in the U.S. nuclear triad of deterrent forces. And the relevance of maintaining their weapons in combat readiness is only growing over time. As military conflicts flare up around the world, global escalation is growing. So what can the U.S. Navy do to counter its enemies? First of all, it is, of course, the future Trident D-5LE nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles which should reach their targets from almost anywhere in the world, because they fly at a range of about 6,800 miles or 11,000 kilometers, and thanks to their high accuracy and power, are able to hit critical enemy targets such as deep bunkers and mine launchers of intercontinental missiles. In total, 16 of these deadly missiles will be deployed instead of 24 on Columbia. The reduction in launchers can be explained by the change in strategic needs, and during the Cold War, submarines were expected to deliver a second strike. But now, priorities have changed, which in turn will also reduce the price of each ship. However, it is obvious that the use of these missiles will lead to the end of all life on the planet, so their use will definitely be the last resort. On the other hand, these submarines can be equipped with Mark 48 torpedoes, which can fire at a distance of about 50 kilometers or 31 miles, which will allow for effective protection of coastal areas. Another interesting weapon is the good old Tomahawk. These missiles are still worthy of attention. Although they were also invented in the last century, their advantages are a range of up to 1,000 miles in high accuracy. We have seen their use in numerous military conflicts, and more than 2,300 of them have been launched since then. Their first use took place during the Gulf War during Operation Desert Storm. Later, they were used in other conflicts in the Middle East against Afghanistan, Syria, and others. In addition, these missiles can perform tasks both on land and against ships, which together with the possibility of launching them from underwater makes them extremely difficult to detect and intercept. And of course, such launchers will leave the Columbia undetected, which is to its advantage. In fact, stealth is another advantage and feature of the new submarine. Although Ohio had a good stealth technology, Columbia is a change and improvement in everything. 
the hull has been changed to have an even more streamlined shape, which reduces hydrodynamic drag and improves the boat's stealth. Acoustic noise reduction, as well as electronic warfare and anti-detection capabilities have also been changed and improved. It is important to understand why all this is being improved and why it is being emphasized so much, because whoever has the information has the situation. And the current US strategy says that the enemy must know that we are somewhere close, but must not have even the slightest idea where. This is perfectly suited to the development of this submarine. In addition, similar technologies are being developed on the other member of the nuclear triad, the B-2 Spirit Strategic Bomber, where stealth plays an almost key role. And most importantly, the United States holds the lead in this, always remaining two steps ahead of its enemies. What are your thoughts on the Columbia-class submarine? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos straight to your notifications.